December 7th. Today's plan, uh, we will revisit Cobia again, look for a bigger one. We're gonna bring some ice to keep uh, Pompano or something like that for Catch and Cook. Um, later this week, we're gonna look for Gar and Largemouth Bass and the Tidal Rivers along with, you know, anything else. So, uh, yep, here we go. I think we're on 12 species. We gotta recap later, but let's get out there. So, uh, we're gonna start just jigging small, looking for Pompano. Hopefully avoiding Jack Creval. Well, that's okay if we catch a couple. What we're doing is locating fish that are deep. Um, I'm jigging them off the bottom. So I'm either doing this one of two ways. One way, I'm sending the jig down to the bottom and just slowly, as soon as the jig comes in contact with the bottom, I'm just slowly lifting. The other alternative method I can do is cast it up tide, let it hit the bottom, work it back to the kayak. Now, this is a really effective way to catch fish deep that aren't coming up off the bottom. For this trip, I've been fishing with the, the medium heavy dark matter rod. It's a very sensitive tip. It's great at you know deep jigging while still still being sensitive enough to properly work a jig along the bottom that you could feel the subtlest tap of your jig sinking and landing on the bottom. That's you know it's important when you're doing some deep jigging. You really want to feel the bottom contours properly as opposed to using a heavy meat stick. Oversimplified jigging as much as you want is basically putting a jig on the bottom. If you ask me, it's a lot more art to it. You know, selecting a jig head size, you know, every quarter ounce can make a difference in the presentation of if you're gonna catch a fish or not. And sure, some fish are dumber than others and easier to catch, but um, some fish are highly pressured and very, very smart. I'm not marking anything. But my cheating fish finder, I'm not marking anything. Bull sharks got everything. I hit the bottom, bounce it back to me. Bottom 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 back to me. Back to me. And we rinse and repeat. Whatever I'm throwing ain't going for them. That's for sure. They ain't doing it. Let's see what else we got here. More dirty tricks. Alright. Look like a tuna. Not sure what that was, but it looked like I got a look at the cam the footage that looked and that was a jack. It felt like a jack the way it hit, but it didn't look like a two uh, jack on the surface. What is it? What is it? Baby cobra, huh? Cool, cool. Little guy. I'll take care of you, don't worry. The baby cobra. Gosh. Handful. Thank you. Be a school of cobras, possible. Damn, he opened up that hook quickly, huh? Look at that. Alright, we gotta retire this jig head quickly. Little, little Dacobia to the kayak. Little ones. Good sign though. I don't know if that's just a pile of catfish. Might be my guess. Big shark. Jesus Christ.
I saw one bull shark already. You know, 25 footer or so. And uh, I brought the net for that reason. I don't want to be putting my hand in the water. That's a problem. open up cheap hooks pretty well. All right. Decent tuna, canal tuna. Really don't want tax man. That's all I know. Some life under the kayak. All right, that's a little smaller one actually. That opened it up easily, huh? Yeah, these jig heads are kind of toys for these types of fish. That's not a jack. Nope, no way. These fish fight. I'm not on the cove here, man. be 33 inches to the fork. I haven't seen him yet. Like get a good got a good look at him if he's any bigger than yesterday's Kobe it was about the same. One of those things. Uh, Kobe he's probably Guessing he's in that 30 inch class. Watch out for those spines there, man. That's a nice fish, huh? Let me take a quick measurement. Oh, God. Yeah, he's a short for sure. Like 31, 32, somewhere around there. All right. This jig's gone. Let's get him out of here, right? If we're doing something right, we're getting a good number of shorts. I want to stay away from the jacks because I know the bull sharks are on them. Like, I want nothing to do with jacks because I know bull sharks are there. See, I might have found a couple more cobia here. Hopefully not bull sharks. Does he have me around here? Where is he going? Where is he got? Where, where did he take me? I think he's got me right here somewhere. That's another Kobe.
caught him. He's a big fish, I know that. Big Kobe, you guys. Staying deep. Uh, those little ones seem to come up real quick and roll around on the surface. This one's staying deep. He went for the structure. He made a lot of those, those moves. I got what I came for here. That's for sure. These guys fight exactly like a big striper, or red, I would say. I wouldn't be surprised if this is like a redfish or something. <sighs> Serious workout today, boys. Done yet, man. He don't want to come up. Uh, I don't know what to do here. I'm not that crazy about the hook I got on there. It's not the first, but you know, take, it, take it easy on that. That's definitely a, a good cobia. There's no doubt about that one being legal. All right. Well. Got him. We got what we wanted. Damn. Hope I don't regret this. Well, there he is. Gotta watch out for those spines. That's somewhere in that 40 inch class. Subdued. Do the cobia today. I think we're done for the day. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Okay. I knew that was gonna happen. Ghost Mullet. It's available from my website, Amazon JH. That's a uh, 3 8 ounce jig head. Slow rolling it on the bottom. That's a 40 pound leader. And uh, use the spin fish for that. Alright, first thing is we got a newspaper. Um, those are hard to find, right? <laughs> it's probably harder to find than a cobia. Party started right about here, honestly. Cut me a little slack. I am filleting in my truck bed here. I know it's not as easy, not quite as easy as at home. Hmm, look at that. Look how good that looks. All right, we just took our cobia cheek meat out. Um, these fish are built for speed, man. Look at these fins, tail. They are fast moving fish too. Uh, we'll take out the belly meat too. No one said it was gonna be pretty, but it's the best we can do at the tool, with our tools at hand. Usually don't mess with the belly meat, but man, 
this thing's got a lot, so we took those that strap out and kind of botched it, but that's okay. Um, yeah, not much left. I'm going to take out the collar right here, try my best to get whatever I can, and that's about it from here. All right, well, we got the most we could out of there. Did my best. Any scraps, I just put them in a separate uh, bag. That's all ribs over there. Um, yeah, it's a special fish, man. I don't really, you know, I have to make special trips for them. You know, maybe we'll start tangling with them next year in Carolina, but uh, this is the first decent one I've ever caught. And there it is, the cobia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen sandwich bags. One gallon sandwich bags. Bobby, I'm coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> uh, I wrap them in paper towels. Uh, cooking and fishing taught me that little trick. It definitely extends the lifespan out of these guys, and they'll be well packed in ice in this bag. We'll drain it and get it in order, and then we'll cook some lunch. Mm. So there's our fresh cobia. Look at that. Truly some delicious, delicious food we're about to eat. I know it. All right, well, we're going to hit this with is a little bit of seasoned salt. Black pepper. Got some cornmeal. Of course, we don't have uh, a level surface to work on, so we'll have to make our adjustments accordingly here. But about four minutes per side on medium heat, and um, yep, should be good. Mm. Just gave it a flip. That looks so good. So you know, cobia, higher mercury fish, right? Only one we kept. I mean, the only other large fish we killed for the season was that big barracuda uh, which we ate one meal out of it gave a bunch to Dan gave some away um, so you know maybe I'll have one more meal out of this we'll see what kind of you know Kobe I'll have frozen um, so the guys that always comment about mercury poisoning mercury poisoning I do end up eating fish once or twice a week I do keep a lot of smaller fish I typically prefer the bottom fish you know white flesh fish the tog the sea bass the sheep's head the flounder um, so the larger fish really don't enter my diet much, and I do that because of the amount of fish I end up consuming. It's a fish that it's, you know, unless you're really that kind of kayak angler that you can really get on them consistently every year, it's a tougher one to come by. It really is. Um, so, you know, it's a little more special to me. Um, this year I feel like I've, my angling skills have got a lot better challenging, a new, challenging myself in new fisheries, you know, reading water, um, I've absolutely gotten much better as a jig fisherman and love jig fishing. That's my thing. So to finally get that on the jig like that off the bottom, you know, piecing together the pieces of the puzzle throughout the day, that was pretty cool. This and the, the barracuda throughout the summer were some of the, you know, the moments I reflected upon and said, finally, I pulled something off, you know. It's just unique, I guess. I don't know. It's tough, though. Don't get me wrong. It was tough to get these guys. Um, so uh, let's eat, man. There's that moment. We're going to chill out and enjoy. And I'll talk to you about random stuff, as I usually do. Some random, some not so random. So let's enjoy the catch and cook cobia. Let's give this a try. I've had cobia before, never my own caught or like fresh. Um, so I'm curious to see how this is going to go. It's a very well-regarded fish in terms of table fare throughout the coast, etc. Oh man, it looks good though. It's got a very nice tissue composition. It's some of the best, yeah. It's very, very large fish. It's like how I remember it. It's one of the best for, you know, a big inshore fish. If you ask me of any inshore fish you can catch and, you know, eat, um, I don't like the larger inshore fish in general. I don't like striped bass over 32 inches. I think they get really, well, uh, bluefish I don't like over, you know, over 16 inches. The big gators, the really big black drum I don't like. Barracuda's okay, but this is much better. I'd say barracuda's around striper. Um, so, yeah, of all the larger fish you can target, I guess this one does take the cake, right? Nothing negative to say about it. Swordfish? Reminds me of swordfish a little bit. Next guys we gotta go after, we have to go after snook. 
gag grouper, canal tarpon, and uh, I think those are the three. Maybe we'll upgrade the grunt. Those are the three left on the west coast. And if we can knock those out, maybe we'll hit the east coast, uh, sailfish, king mackerel, that kind of stuff. But snook and gag grouper are the two that are sticking out that I could, I could still pull off. And tarpon, which I'm not finding. Um, so, all right, and a brief gear update for those guys that are interested. Um, sometimes I like to talk about it. Sometimes people like to hear what my experiences are. So far, I like the 2019 Outback, man. Not getting water in the hole. Um, I, I guess that has to do with the quality control of some hatches leaking, some not. Fishes nicely, it handles well. Um, so far, I'm liking it. And, you know, thank you to Great Outdoor Provision in North Carolina getting me on this to get me on this trip. I provide content, it's a great shop, great work that they've done to help me. Um, big thanks to uh, Three Bells Outfitters in Connecticut. I'm sorting through the warranty stuff, getting me, I'm getting a 2018 Outback is what I decided on. Um, but in the future, I will like this, I think I will. I haven't taken it into the surf yet, but for inshore purposes and what I've been doing so far here in Tampa Bay, I like it. So. Um, nothing bad to say about that. We're still fishing that Akuma picture, man. And it's still kicking ass. It, the drag is starting to get a little inconsistent. That I'm no longer get. I feel like it's no longer... I feel like when I'm trying to put more drag on the fish, especially those big jacks, I'm not gaining any more drag. So I'm tightening down that dial now. I feel like the drag, maybe the drag washers are already short shot. I don't know. Uh, but I'm not getting that that as much drag out of the reel now um, after you know two weeks of use. Don't get me wrong; those jacks are probably some of the hardest fighting fish uh, you can encounter. As a tourist to Florida, like myself, they are one of my favorite. So, and finally, um, I've been using this on my spin fisher. Uh, that's Fanatic braided line. It's a high-end braided line. Um, I don't know too many details about it, so I'm not going to bullshit you. Uh, but you know, to me, braided line. Uh, some of the more crucial steps about the braided line is how it casts, or is, is it wind knot prone? The other way is how does it come off your spool when you're dropping deep, you know, dropping straight down? Does it like meet any resistance from the spool of your reel? And third is um, how long of a lifespan, you know, before it starts getting like crusty. I call it crusty braid, that it's no longer like, you know, when you open your braid and you're trying to jig, it like seizes up and binds up. So, so far, none of those issues. So if you are interested in checking out a different brand of braid, there is a link in the video's description. Fanatic, it's a startup out of California. It's a high-end braided line. I've always used PowerPro. I used to use Cast King when I worked with them. Uh, but this is definitely a pretty good performance braid, and so far, I like it. So, and I would tell you, uh, or I wouldn't even bring this up if I thought it was garbage. So, so far, I do like it. And I like my Outback, and I like that Akuma Pixar. I think it's a great reel for 45 bucks, and I like that spin, pen, pen spin fisher, 2500 right now. Um, it's not that, it's not Shimano smooth, but it's still a great reel. It's performing to the task, it's kicking big jacks, but it's working on those cobia, and both of these fish are some of the harder fighting fish you can encounter. So I think they're both winners. I think they're all winners. You're a winner, everyone's a winner. Uh, that being said, thanks for tuning in. Let's see where we go next. But wait, there's more. It's two o'clock. I'm done doing everything I needed to. Let's go see what we can find in the rivers. We gotta find the good tarpon. That's what we need to find. Feels like another Mission Impossible today. Why you say that? I'm gonna try to find a 28 inch plus snook. I don't know. I don't know where they are. I don't know where the tarpon are. I don't know where the gar are. Actually, I do know where the gar are. I just don't know how to catch the gar. And... It's gotta be very quiet today. Damn, this water's clean. Got a good fish. I'm just trolling a little four inch DOA. 
And is that a bluefish? Get out of here. That's a big bluefish, man. Dude, we got a bluefish. I need that. It's a Florida bluefish. What is it? It's a, probably like a three, four pound fish. I don't have to measure him. He's well over 12 inches. Oh gosh. They're a handful, man. Oh. I thought for sure we would encounter a snook. That's the next species on the list there. Who would have thought bluefish? <laughs> cool. It's probably what I saw jumping and blitzing around. All right, peace out, my bro. Anchor. Their gill plates are razor sharp. They will f you up. Those razor, those gill plates, little guys, huh? I'm having a hard time finding them anything of size right now. The stinking bluefish for the afternoon. Um, lots of mullet around. What I should do is get some bread. And with some bread, perhaps we can rot and reel a mullet. Dinker. Damn. Not what we need, but still more or less welcome surprise, I guess. Decent trout there. It's probably in the yeah, decent speckled trap. We got the bluefish speckled trap combo. Little skinny guy there. Ooh. Definitely a legal one, and not a bad one. This. Yeah, I was just fast trolling along the mangroves, honestly. That's all I can do right now. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this evening. Before the noceums. Come out and get me. I think it's a little too cold for them, but maybe not. At least we got a bonus bluefish out of today. Just gotta try to catch a mullet. It's not a bad idea. I think we can do that. A little piece of bread. Maybe they'll bite. Alright, that's it. Thank you for enjoying. That's it for December 7th. Beautiful night, man. Alright, I'm out of here.